Hey guys, Anthony, 4 Before Diesel. Just doing a quick video, I thought we'd run through a few things with a lot of people possibly having to store the vehicle or not drive the vehicle for a period of time now. So we're gonna run through this four main aspects and there's three little bonus ones. Um, and this, I suppose, is relevant to not only motor vehicles, but boats, motorbikes, and sort of anything else with an engine or tires and that sort of thing. So let's get started. The four main items we're gonna talk about are fuel and oil, batteries, and tires. They're the four main ones. Okay, let's talk about fuel first. Maybe it's one of the most important, one of the most important ones. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe we'll work out which one is actually the most important by the end of the video. So obviously we've got different types of fuel. Um, I'm not gonna go into LPG because that's a, there's very minimal of those. And I don't think it matters too much. The most important one is probably unleaded, which is what's usually in one of these red containers, unleaded petrol, petrol, petroleum. Okay, it goes stale, okay, so if you're going to have the same, look, this is what you've got to think about. The Prado, like the 120, has got a 180 litre fuel tank, quite large. If you're not going to be driving much, if you're not going to use that 180 litres um, in any period of time soon, you know, you're just ducking down the shops once a week, it's 5Ks away, it's going to take you a year to use the fuel. So you may want to consider getting yourself, if you haven't already, a fuel stabiliser. So you're just going to the usual sort of Ripco's and super cheap's and whatever, try and get whatever's on special or not or whatever. Have a look how many litres, and you can add a stabiliser if you think it's gonna be a long time. Like if you're gonna leave the vehicle parked, now there's two aspects to fuel as well. Do you leave the tank full, empty, half full? Okay, good question. Because with unleaded, as we said, it goes stale. So really, you don't wanna to store too much of it. But then on the other hand, by keeping the tanks full, you get less condensation, which results in you know water in your fuel possibly. So depending what climates you're in and stuff like that. Um, so unleaded, what would I do? Yeah, that's a good question. The unleaded sitting around, look, sitting around is never a good thing. Okay, I don't really like it. Um, ideally, you want to drive the beast regularly, and this is petrol and diesel, just briefly. Whatever it is, drive the beast regularly. So. If you're in lockdown and you can't drive anywhere, then obviously that's what you'll be doing. But some things are essential. Food's essential. That's the only thing that's really essential when push comes to shove. And if it's still okay to go for a drive as it is at the moment, now when we say it's okay for a drive, it's stay home, but it's okay to go for a drive. Now, it just depends what your destination is. If it's to go see friends, family, that's not okay. If it's to go to the park and play at the play equipment, that's not okay. At the moment, it's okay to go for a drive. So what I'm saying is, give the vehicles a run, drive them. Don't head into busy congested areas, which you nowhere know, should be that. Just head north, head east, head, head west, wherever you are. Head away from where everyone's gonna be. Give the car a nice highway run, 100K zone if you can. Don't, not sitting idling, not stop start. You don't wanna do the, what a lot of people do, and it's more getting onto the battery side of things start the car, let it idle for five minutes and switch it off. That's what you don't want to do, okay? So minimum once, if not twice a week, start the vehicle, normal warm up, you know, idle for a minute or two, drive it nicely till it's fully warm, then get it out in the 100K zone, give it a good 10 minute run, and then you can head back. So you don't need to go and burn up a lot of fuel, because if you waste a lot of fuel, then you're gonna be at the servo risking contamination at the pump, you need to take precautions there, using your gloves, your sanitizer, and every precaution you can to not spread the disease. And it's not really about the disease, but it's all relevant, and that's why I suppose I've thought of this video, because it's something that's important. Um, so, what do you want, if you're gonna be able to do that, I suppose you don't wanna fill your tanks, you just wanna keep maybe 50 liters in there, you don't need to run stabilizer, and if you're regularly topping it up, that fresh fuel is going to help with the old fuel. It's going to keep it flowing, if you know what I mean. You've got a good mix at least. So I would re recommend, as much as it's not good for contamination, maybe a top up once a week or once every two. You can leave it. Look, fuel's good for at least a month, two months, right? So a couple of months, right? So look, you don't need to put stabilizers. You don't need to go every week. I shouldn't say that. I reckon every two or three weeks, if you haven't used much, just go and throw another 20, 30, 40, 50 litres in. If you want, you can keep it full. If you're storing the vehicle longer term, like off for a year or something, that's a good question. Definitely stabilize it for the fuel that's in there. But the best thing you can always do is get someone to give it a run. You know, give it a run, 
if you can leave your vehicle with someone to look after it and drive it once every two weeks and get the fuel through it, not short trips, a highway run, you know, when they go somewhere that's a bit further, that's probably one of the most helpful things you can do. So just be aware though, they're your pros and cons with unleaded. It does go off. You need stabiliser if it's going to be a long time. Getting someone to drive it, keep it moving, keep the fuel flowing and sloshing around in the tank so that you don't get things, you know, you can get sort of a bit of a high tide mark and problems at that area. Um, keeping it full will help with your condensation. Now, let's move on to diesel. So that's your unleaded side of things. Um, diesel, it doesn't go off like unleaded does, so it's not a big issue. If you've got any bad fuel though and water and stuff in the fuel and it's sitting still, that's when, you know, your, your algae and stuff may multiply. And the best thing for your injectors and your fuel system is again to keep that fuel flowing rather than let it sit there still. There is a word for what happens with the, in the injectors with the fuel sitting there not moving. So if you think you've got a car that's got low kilometres, so everything's okay, it's 10 or 12 years old and you've only done 80,000 k's or something, so your injectors are okay, wrong. Because sitting around a low short trips isn't the most ideal thing either. You can see, see the reflection there, see that movement? That's me using my hands. I'm sort of talking using my hands, right? <laughs> Maybe I should turn the camera around. Anyway, uh, look, you know, I haven't been dressed that well lately. It's a uh, weekend, so we've got the old work t-shirts and everything because one other thing I'd like to point out, get as much as you can out of your clothing, mate. Don't, don't shop to look fancy. Just the old clothes, get the work stuff done, whatever. You don't need to impress anyone. Save your money and um, keep looking for Australian-made products good luck with that but we need to sort of um, lobby companies to start manufacturing maybe back in Australia it can be done at the right price that's for sure um, so diesel fuel keep it flowing is the best thing I can say definitely keep the tank full because it doesn't go stale like unleaded keep the tank full if you're going to store it fill it up let it park there don't go and fill it up every 50 or 100 k's to keep it full if you're leaving the vehicle for a few months keeping the tanks full is the go if you can get someone to run the vehicle every once a week, take it for a drive, that's the go. Five k's is better than nothing, rather than letting it sit there, give it a run once a week, okay? Keep the tanks full. Um, what else can I say about diesel? Keep it full to save condensation. Okay, we got that. The diesel, it, it stays pretty well. Just run it regularly, okay? Now, I think what we need to move on to, that covers fuel, let's move on to oil. All right, so I said maybe fuel's one of the most important ones. At the start, I said there's four main components. I suppose the top two might be fuel and oil because they're in your major components that are expensive that you want to last. I suppose the other things like batteries and tyres, you can replace them. But we'll still include how to look after those. Now, with oil, change your oil, okay? If you're going to leave the vehicle sit and not run for a period of time, there's other precautions you can take as well. Refer to your manufacturer's um, manual, workshop manual, um, handbook, whatever you want to call it, because they do have different recommendations, okay, depending whether it's a two stroke or four stroke, what engine, you know, the old pourer, you know, a teaspoon of oil into whatever, you know, so you've got to be specific about what oil and what engine if you're going to do that. It may be pour it in to let it sit, it may be pour a little bit in before you hit the go button, right? Because most of your engine wear happens at startup. So, a couple of things to think about, particularly with the petrol oils and the petrol engine okay that that fuel is what blows past the rings and contaminates the oil that's what gives it its discoloration and its smell and what's in that oil those contaminants is what attack your seals and make all your quality seals go hard and obviously begin to leak now we know we're talking Toyotas generally here this is all vehicles really but we make we work on Toyotas quality seals that generally don't have issues with this but this is not only maintenance wise, the more you change your oil and keep it clean, having a balance, not being silly, you don't want to do your oil every Friday afternoon at work when you when you finish work, what we used to do when we were apprentices every Friday afternoon, roll it up into the lube bay and ch -ch 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 another five litres of oil. It was beautiful, a bit silly. That's just a waste of oil and the silly things we did when we were 18. Okay, so, and of course it was the company's shout for oil. Back then, oil, I think bulk we were paying about 90 cents a litre, right? So. Uh, I had an XE Falcon. What's that? I think it was uh, four and a half litres it took. So it literally cost about four bucks. And it was their shout anyway. It cost them four bucks to let us change your oil. Um, waste of oil. About every 5,000 Ks or, you know, three months, whichever comes first. If you're doing shorter trips. If you're doing longer trips, 
I don't mind if it's 10,000 k's. If you're doing like, you know, you're out there traveling, you're doing a lot of k's, you're doing 10,000 k's in a couple of months. Like, if you go away and do a two month trip and you've done 10 or 15,000 k's in a diesel, I'm not too worried if you even do the whole trip and come back and don't change your oil and you've done 15,000. There you go. You don't need to fuss about worrying about getting an oil change. The engine is that clean because you've done the regular maintenance, it's done highway k's, less contamination, the oil is still good particularly if you haven't got a really bad EGR system, if you know what I'm saying, and it's nice and clean, the oil, it's staying cleaner, it'll be fine for longer, okay? Other countries have different oil change intervals which are longer as well, so the times that high Ks are okay is when you've done it in short periods of time. Now, so the main advantage of changing your oil is you've got clean oil sitting there, so that's two things. It, so then you haven't got that oil eating away at your seals, it's all nice and fresh, nice and new, beautiful and then you've got the best quality oil in your engine so when you do hear that hit that start button you've got the best quality oil and of course the additives the additives in the oil are brand new in their best condition with new oil so when you you've changed your oil you've run the engine and you switch it off and I suggest, suggest I've mentioned in another video recently your final park it up switch it off with the engine cold okay so you've changed your oil it's all good then the next day Two days later, you're going away. You're catching a plane to Wuhan in China, right? So you've put, you've changed your oil. You've got your trip to China planned to go and source some cheap clothing for your big company in Australia. No, don't do that. But that's what you've done. And if you've done that, you're not listening because you've got too much money. Capitalist, you know? Anyway, so you've done your oil change. It's all happy. You've, got, you've done your oil change on Wednesday. You're flying out on Friday, so on Thursday, start the engine, and after 10 seconds, switch it off, right? You've definitely got all the best additives, and that zinc, see here where it says full zinc, full zinc, right? Zinc's the product that sticks to your components on the engine, like, you know, Castrol Magnatec, there's no magnets or anything going on, but that's kind of what it means, it's what sticks, that's what protects double layer protection right? that's what protects your components when you first start the engine okay so clean oil that's what that's all about so you get it change your oil before you leave it again the best thing you can do is get someone to run the vehicle regularly and I don't mean let it sit there for two weeks and then start it up and let it idle for five minutes and switch it off again maybe that's better for nothing for your engine and your oil but not necessarily for other things like batteries which we'll move on to now okay batteries What's going to happen to your batteries when you leave them sitting around? Or when someone just starts the engine um, and then lets it run for a minute or two or five or ten and then switches it off, okay? Basically what's happening while your battery's sitting there, it is slowly discharging, okay? The best way to keep a battery is fully charged. So the most important thing I would recommend is having a some sort of trickle charger on it, which I'll show you in a moment what I'd possibly recommend something like. I'm not particular recommending that charger or that brand other than that's what I use okay so if you like what the way I roll then maybe I am recommending that but not directly if you know what I mean um, the batteries you want to keep them full so if it's sitting there for a week slowly discharging because you've got you've got it probably just naturally discharges anyway and then you've got things in the vehicle that create a slight load for memory and stuff like that okay electronics right so by going and starting the vehicle, hitting that starter motor, what it draws from the battery, that's quite a lot, okay? So that's going to suck a bit out of it straight away. So it's going to take a little while just to get that back. So you may be not doing the right thing by just starting it, not putting much fuel through the engine, you're not warming it up, it's just sitting there idling. In manufacturers, again, back to the workshop manual or your owner's manual, whatever you want to call it, if you ever read it, which I don't always read them, you know, it's all about time, right? Priorities. So. But when you read them, you'll find somewhere in there, it'll say about not letting the vehicle idle for prolonged periods of time. Even if you're in traffic, they say to switch it off, it's going to idle more than two minutes. So of course, letting it idle for five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, once, twice, three times a week, or every two or three weeks, it's not the best thing you can do. The thing needs to be driven, okay? So to look after your battery, you want to put it on a trickle charger, and if somebody's going to use the vehicle for you, then you probably don't need to do that if it's going to get driven at least once, preferably twice a week. I've just found a bit of a leaf up under the bonnet here. I'll take that out. 
And that's what you do when you open your bonnet. You take all those leaves and rubbish, you clean it out, okay? And we're gonna to get to that. That's one of the other important things we're getting to, clean. But I think we're pretty well covered on batteries other than, I'll show you this charger that we use. I've got one mounted, this is our 120 Prado. There's one mounted in the back of the vehicle permanently on the side of the storage system. It plugs into a power board. Also, our fridge plugs into that power board. So when we park the vehicle and plug it in, if it's not gonna be driven for the day, the batteries are on charge and the fridge is running on 240 volt, which is most efficient. You cannot run your fridge all the time without sufficient running of the vehicle. You're just gonna ruin your battery. And then when you go on a trip, it's gonna let you down, okay? Don't cycle your batteries unless you do an R&D or you want to kill it, okay? That's what kills batteries. Keep it full. The best way to look after the battery, please understand, keep it full. Let's have a look at this charger. Okay, so as I said, we've got one mounted, you can see up the side there, two screws into the side. You can see the power board. If we were traveling and we pull into a caravan park every few days so we can use the facilities because we like clean, you know, have a freshen up, have a shower. We may even plug in on power. Maybe if we're going to be there two nights because there's things to look at in the area so we're going to stay a couple of nights we may even all we've got to do we've got that lead off the power board comes out the window i can actually show it to you right here because it's plugged in i think i can there it is right that comes out the window that's the end of the line that's our extension lead at the top okay that plugs in fridge is running on 240 volt most efficiently and our batteries are getting looked after now we've got another one for other vehicles and stuff and boats and bikes and whatever we might need to maintain at the time just want to point out they're only about 60 bucks worth from bunnings they may have gone up though up and down prices change the dollar changes and all that uh repco was a lot dearer but they're of course on special and trade prices they'd come a lot cheaper so i'd suggest it's only worth about that sort of money probably ebay you'll find it for about that as well right so about 60 bucks it's got a nice short lead which is nice and neat that's what i like about that and just a, a clip in so what it comes with it comes with your alligator clips so you can put those on a battery and just clip those into this and it also comes with on the other end of this clip is wires with those uh what do you call it round eyelet type terminals if you know what i mean so you can put it permanently on your battery which is what we've done let's go to the other end and have a look at that because i didn't show you that i've shown you in another video of course so we've got an anderson ball here that goes direct to this battery that's the accessory battery on the setup of this and you can see the there's the little plug there. So if we wanted to charge this battery with the other charger or have one of these set up on our main battery or um, any other vehicle, then we can use a setup that just goes direct to the battery, okay? And then that's there ready to plug in. We just have that sitting there facing downward. So any moisture or dirt, same as the Anderson plug, it falls out the other way. Well, last but not least of my top four, and I think I've got it right. Like I said, I don't plan things too well. It's make it up as I go. That's how we roll. Tires. Okay, so what's the go with tires? Well, a couple of things. When sitting there, they do slowly go flat. So keep that in mind to check your tire pressures every now and then if you're doing your own maintenance. So we do go a little bit off top again. I'm gonna do that here for a minute. Looking at these tires, I just wanna say, I am quite happy with them in some respects, but not so happy in others. And one of them you can see, I think the sidewall's a bit um, thinner compared to the BFGs because of the ride and when you air down how much they sort of bulge out a lot which is good and bad but it could be just coincidence but there's a bit of sidewall damage there as well a um, bit of a nice slice into that wall there and they haven't been used extensively off-road really the tread I really like it's a little bit noisy it's noisier than a BFG funnily enough it doesn't look like a noisy tread pattern but they're really grippy on the road. What they're really good for is they're really grippy. You know, the Grand Trek, well, that's what it is. It's a Grand Trek AT3G. Works really well on the road. So if you're looking for something that's a bit, you know, on-road, off-road-ish, it's something to consider. I'm not saying it's the best option out there. And I don't drive on many road-orientated tyres other than the Grand Treks, which are obviously awesome for fuel economy and awesome for on-road use. Absolutely awesome tyres for that. So if that's what you're using your vehicle for, then that's what's for you now. Tires in general though, okay? So they go, they can go flat slowly. Um, they sort of, to, to be a bit wrong in words used, they go square, they go flat on the bottom. What's the matter, your tires are flat, it's only flat on the bottom. Well, <laughs> funny that, but when it's flat on the bottom for too long with that sort of weight on it, it can make it go really flat on the bottom. And I think it can probably damage the sidewall rubber as well because it's sitting in that position for so long. So 
It all depends how long we're talking about. What we're talking about generally, not too bad. So make sure your tires are pumped up. Put a little bit more than usual, isn't gonna hurt them. Because the correct tire pressure, it's about safety, it's about wear and things like that. Um, they're the two main things, safety and wear. While it's parked, they're not wearing. So a bit extra air wouldn't hurt. And if you can, take the weight off them. Like right here, you know, the vehicle's just sitting on the horse at the moment, but you know, we can bring it up. The more weight you take off them, obviously, the better. So you'll see a lot of people storing old vehicles and they put it on stands and that sort of thing. So that's what it's about there. Um, I wouldn't go as far as to say to worry about that too much. Depends how long we're talking. So if we're talking you parked up for a few weeks or a month or something with this coronavirus thing, and we can't go anywhere and you've got a number of vehicles and you're only using one to go to the shops and back then some of these things need to be considered um, as i said giving them a run which at this point in time there's nothing wrong with giving them a run you just be careful of your destination just stay away from people the more people do the better at this the sooner we can get get it sorted flat not even flatten the curve let's just kill it off right let's just kill it off flatten it right out you know Bazing bazu gone, and then we can just get back to normal. You know what I mean? Other than don't open the borders because that'll just bring it back again. You know what I mean? So things are going to happen slowly, right? Okay, so we've covered fuel, we've covered wax them stabilizer in or drive, it's the best thing you can do. Oil, um, clean oil anytime, especially if you're going to let it sit for the reasons we already spoke about. Batteries, um, so put it on the charger if you can, keep it full. I've got, I've got a note here actually, I've, got some, I've written a little note to myself next to um, battery because I did write fuel, oil, battery, tyres, I haven't told you the other four yet, three yet. What does it say? What? I can't even read my own writing, terrible isn't it? It says, it says charge, it says something else, I don't know, batteries, Dish. yeah I don't know, can't be that important, batteries, yeah you got to put on the charger, right? we said that. Anyway, tyres, put some air in them, try and take some weight off them or use the vehicle take it for a drive once or twice a week you know short drive whatever 10 minutes 15 minutes tires yep and the last thing is last few things that are probably less important but it is important location pick your location if you're going to park a vehicle whether it's for this shorter term or a longer term some other time remember the sun wrecks everything okay the sun's your enemy like the covid 19 the sun is your enemy it's trying to kill you with skin cancer okay and it's killing everything you spend money on your house, your motor vehicles, anything outside, your garden hose, right? The, the, the uh, material on your pergola, whatever you like, right? If it's out in the sun, it's going to get wrecked. Now, buildings generally are fairly sun resistant. You know, if you've got colour bond or a um, tile roof or whatever, your bricks and gutters and things like that, it'll still mess with the paint and the coatings and that, but they're designed for that. Motor vehicles aren't really designed that well for the sun, okay? They're just really not. Paint work. It just gets hot, it absolutely cops a hammering, the whole car gets hot inside and out, and it wrecks your interior. Why do you think people have problems with dashes and stuff like that? It's not a problem with the car or the dash or Toyota, it's the sun. Okay, so pick your location. You wanna keep it out of the weather. Sorry guys, we've got some showers on and off here at the moment and it's getting a bit noisy. I'll do my best to speak close so you can hear me. But uh, location, pick your location out. So you're out of the sun is the main one. If you're out of the weather and water as well, so indoors, in a shed or a garage or whatever is obviously ideal, and then you don't even have to cover it. But it is gonna get a layer of dust on it because no garages are really sealed that well. So the first thing you wanna do when you get, get it out is give it a good hose off and give it a wash again. So park it in clean. If you wanna put a cover over it, that's even better. And a cover was part of one of my next ones. So we said location, the weather, get out the weather. And the next one is clean and cover. So, you know, start off with it clean, vac it out. You don't want old dirty things in there. It just, these smells just manifest from dirty cars. Keep your vehicles clean. It's much better for everyone, for your own uh, hygiene we're talking at the moment, aren't we? Hygiene, washing hands and stuff like that. So I'm a very clean person generally. Um, you know, I suppose that's just, I don't know why, what went wrong. I don't know if it's OCD clean or not. I just think I'm pretty clean. I wouldn't think too clean. I say, oh, don't worry, I get dirty. I'm gonna get dirty. But um, look, clean cover it if you like so if you clean it wash it sham it dry it let it dry before you cover it you don't want to again condensation you don't want moisture sitting in there so if you're going to park the vehicle and you're going to put a cover over it give it a wash leave it out in the sun dare i say it after i told you, you not to leave it out in the sun for a day before you bring it in and cover it okay so bring it in cover it take some weight off the tires if you can put some extra air in there if you can 
um, and they're your things. Bat charge your battery, take care of your fuel. I think that covers pretty well everything I could include on how to look after the vehicle if you're parking it for a while. They're the things to think about, right? Your fuel. The biggest one for me is fuel, because fuel system's expensive, right? Diesel fuel system. I don't want to just sell you a diesel fuel system. I want to tell you how to protect it. Drive the beast is the best thing you can do. The majority of the vehicles I'm talking to, owners, the majority I think are diesel owners. I could be wrong. Hey, put it in the comments. Diesel, petrol. Just a short one. Diesel, petrol, diesel, petrol, diesel, petrol, LPG, whatever. Let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the comments. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. And there's going to be more awesome information coming your way. Probably more and more and more as we get locked in, which, which suits both of us because I've probably got more time and you've got more time for learning. So as I always say, go back, work your way back through all the other videos. If you've got a question, it's probably in the video. So do yourself a favor and go and have a look at those. And uh, look forward to the next one. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.